Hiva Huvenda. Good morning in Finnish. Hope you're doing good today. Today is Thursday, day 25, April 23rd. The NFL draft is tonight. I'm excited. It's going to be a great day. I hope you have a great day. Hey, I hope you're keeping up with your reading. We're on day 25. So today, one of the verses that I chose from yesterday is one that Paul, it's kind of Paul's life verse. In Acts 20, verse 24, it says, I consider my life, this is when they were trying to keep him from going back to Jerusalem, fear of his life. And he says, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. And I've kind of accepted that as kind of my life verse as well, because that's why I got into the ministry is to preach good news to people and to give them hope, especially in the world that we kind of live in. And so I really like that verse. Uh, let's get into the Psalms. You, get, you read five Psalms, 71, 72, five Psalms today. We're stretching you out a little bit, but we're going to get, we had to get, we had to read 150 Psalms in 40 days. And so this is how the, the outline turned out. But there's some really good Psalms. Psalms 71 is really kind of a sad prayer because it's a prayer of a king that's reaching older age. And he's asking God to help him and prevent the enemies from realizing this and doing something bad. And uh, they see that he's weak, and so he's just praying that God would protect him. It's a, it's a positive prayer, but it's a, it's a simple prayer. And it's, um, it says that, uh, that it's quite possible David wrote this as he's getting older, because in the next, psalm, next couple of psalms, he writes to a new king that's going to be uh, coming, and he prays for the new king. Um, so this is one of the latter psalms that David writes. Psalm 72 is the last uh, song in the book in book two of Psalms. Remember we talked earlier that there's five books of Psalms that they've kind of lumped together. And they do that, either they talk about similar topics or they're written in a similar way. And if you remember earlier, like the first book that uses the name Yahweh for God, and now this book, book two, uses the word Elohim for God. So they, the uh, people that helped put the Old Testament together compiled them in this way so that it would make more sense. And so this is the last one in, in book two. And this is the last, it says the last of David's prayers and to pray it's a prayer for a king who will rule asking god to help him with justice and protecting the poor and needy and blessing the nation so this is the prayer for the new king coming and that he would be a righteous king and that he would take care of the poor and the needy that was a really big concern for god always taking care of the poor and the needy and that they would be a blessing to all nations not just our nation or the the people of israel but to be a blessing to the world psalm 73 then begins book number three and book number three is kind of lumped into six psalms, and then there's five psalms, and then there's six psalms. And right in the middle, Psalms 81 is kind of the pivotal psalm, and that's kind of that highlights covenant relationship between God's people and God Himself. A covenant is a tr contract, and to uphold that. So these psalms are related to that. Uh, the Psalm 73 is about godly wisdom. And it's talking about the destinies of the wicked and the righteous. And uh, another psalm talked about this, that sometimes you look out and you go, man, why are, why are those people that don't love God, why are, they, why are they prospering? And it almost makes you kind of wondering if what you're doing is worth it. But the psalm is, yes, it's worth it. In the end, everybody's going to get what, what's due and God will judge correctly. You just keep on the same path where, where you're leading because your path is going to lead you to God. Psalm 74 is asking God to defend the cause because uh, some of God's uh, enemies are mocking mocking his people. And so it's just a prayer to protection, another one of those prayers of protection. And then Psalm 79 is a song of assurance. And you kind of you give thanks for his goodness and his greatness. And it's a prayer of assurance in a world that's kind of crazy. And when world powers threaten the king's people, that God would be there to defend it. And it praises God for all of his good deeds. All right, in Acts, in the New Testament, we've been reading Acts 21 and 22, and we've been reading about Paul's missionary's journey, and now he's going to make his way back to Jerusalem. And over and over again, you sense that he's something bad's going to happen, that he's going to be arrested. And Paul's, uh, the church recognizes that as well, and, they, and over and over again, uh, Christians are trying to say, don't go back there, don't go back there. But he's making his way back. And then so in Acts 21, he's stopping in different locations, talking with the brothers and sisters in Christ and encouraging them and maybe seeing them for the last time. So it's, again, follow that pattern with a, a map in the back of your Bible and just see where he's kind of ending up because he's kind of making his way, well, he is making his way back. But in one of the stops, there was a prophet named Agabus that came up to him and basically said that he's going to be arrested when he goes back to Jerusalem. And of course, the church that was there really strongly pleaded with him not to go. And he says, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to 
to give my life for the Lord. In Acts 22, then, we see him arrive in Jerusalem, and he goes directly to James and also to the elders of Jerusalem. They're kind of, they're kind of functioning as the, the center of all the church, kind of the bigwigs. And so he goes back and he tells them what's happening in the Gentile world and all the conversions that are happening, and they're really, really excited about that. Well, then some Jewish people heard, heard that he was in town, and when he was out and about, they, they grabbed him, and they caused a riot. They caused a mob, and they were beating him, and they wanted to get him killed. And then a centurion rescued him out of that, and they were going to take him to their barracks, but Paul pleaded with them to give him a chance to speak, and so they let him speak. And he gave his testimony about how he used to persecute Christians, but then he saw the living Jesus, and now he's telling people about Jesus and the resurrection. And then he said, when he starts talking about, and God's opened up the salvation to all people, even Gentile people, then the mob got upset. And I just think it's fascinating that they, they were so selfish about God's blessing on their life that they didn't want it for anybody else. And so they got upset at Paul again, and so the centurions took him out of there. And uh, the centurion thought he was another, he was a rebel. There was a rebel that was causing problems, and um, but Paul had nothing to do with that person. And so he wanted to get to the bottom of it, and so he was going to have him flogged, and then they were going to interrogate him. And Paul says, you're going to flog a Roman citizen? And the guy backs up and goes, what? He says, I'm a Roman citizen. And... Um, they have rights. And so right away they stopped because there's due process for that. They would have gotten a lot of trouble if they didn't allow that to happen. And Paul uses this over and over again in order to make his way to the highest power to go to Rome and to talk with people there. So it's unfolding. It ends, that chapter ends when he's in front of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious council that we talked about a little while, a couple days ago. And then it moves into chapter 23 and that story unfolds. But Paul is, there's some tension here. We're getting to the end of the book of Acts and uh, Paul's making his way to give testimony in front of these great leaders of the world at that time. All right. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good time reading and learning and I hope they have a great day today. Talk to you tomorrow.